to the northeast of Castle Rock at the present time. Again, about two miles to the southwest of Bradbury Ranch. As we pull out, you can clearly see it's a little faint, but I'll try and help you out here just a bit. You can see the funnel right in this area, right there. And that is a tornado on the ground. Now, these are generally weak tornadoes. It's not very big, but I'll let air trackers zoom in once again. We do have homes in the vicinity. If you are in the area around Bradbury Ranch, and obviously you want to seek shelter, this is not a large tornado, maybe only a few hundred mi uh, yards wide at the most, but if that hits that home right there, we are going to see destruction here. Uh, right at the moment, we're going to watch this very carefully. Please, if you are in this area of central Douglas County, south of the Pinery, south of Parker, you want to get to an interior room or hallway, best to get in the basement and get away from any exterior walls or windows. Uh, this tornado, although it is small, probably will pack winds of about 100 miles per hour. And if it uh, strikes a building which had just missed that home, we would see a considerable amount of destruction. Now you can see the size of it has grown in quite a bit. This is what we call a land spout tornado. Notice that it is thinner at the top than it is at the bottom. And that is due to the fact that it is being created by winds that are swirling into the updraft of this storm. As they do that, uh, it does not have a supercell. It doesn't have a giant rotating thunderstorm. It really is a bunch of, of winds from different storms swirling in together and being drawn into the updraft to form this tornado. It is a tornado. Uh, likely, this would just be what we'd call on the Fujita scale. Uh, the enhanced Fujita scale, an EF0 or an EF1. It's a giant dust devil, if you, if you will, a dust devil. But they can cause a considerable amount of damage if they were to uh, hit in an area that, of course, is populated. We're going to take a look at this. We'll continue with this for just a bit. This is really something to see a tornado like this on live television. Uh, we have a lot of news going on at the Democratic National Convention, but this is a tornado that is located about two miles to the northeast of Castle Rock and out uh, just east of I-25. The storm is moving very slowly. It is uh, almost just stationary, the parent thunderstorm, if you will. And let's go to Jason Luber uh, for, for your comments and the exact location where you're looking at this, Jason. Mike, what you're seeing at the very bottom of the screen there is I-25 and Castle Pines Parkway. That's where we are. We're looking due to the east, and you can see the entirety of the uh, of the uh, tornado there. As we saw it as a funnel cloud and then quickly reached a tornado. And as you've been talking about, I'm thinking it's probably closer right now to Crowfoot Valley Road, right in that area south of Castle Rock. And we're just due, I mean, it is due east, probably what, Danny, maybe a mile and a half or so, due east of where our position is right now. Um, and so that's what it looks like. And you can see all the dust, Mike, that's being uh, sucked up by the tornado. It did just barely miss that house. Now, the houses out here are pretty widely scattered. It's not like a subdivision where they're all real tight, like a Highlands Ranch kind of situation. It's more uh, rural, and so we're going to have a lot of houses that are bounced out in, uh, in uh, probably several hundred uh, yards away from each other. But wow, look at that. That's pretty impressive. Now it looks like it's getting bigger and bigger. Mike, let me pull back the camera here in air tracker and you can see the whole size of it and you were talking about how thick it is on the bottom and how much thinner it gets onto the top but it's coming right out of the cloud right down to the ground and picking up all that dust and debris and yet we haven't seen any damage mike as we're trying to stay you know a couple miles away from this thing we don't want to get too close to it uh, here in the helicopter and right now we're right over i-25 there are people stopped on the highway and here at the exit watching the tornado right now. They're just parked. They're outside their cars. They're grabbing their cell phones. They're grabbing their cameras. As so we're going to have a lot of pictures of this storm coming up from the ground people in uh, a little while. But the highway is actually uh, starting to get a little bit heavy as people are stopping to watch this just uh, east of Castle Pines Parkway. So pretty scary, Mike. Let me try to get in and see exactly where it is now. And you can see it just churning up into the ground there. Pretty open area, which is good news. You know that new uh, the new reservoir that they're building down here? We're just due south of uh, that area right now. Hey Jason, are there, uh, if you pull back just about maybe a medium shot there, so we're talking about some pretty high-end homes that are very close by there. Is oh, yeah. These just are south of Castle Pines? Yeah. You know, we're not too far from the Pradera area uh, out that way. That's the way the storm continues to move out to the east. And it's moving fairly quickly. But you can see there's a home here, a home there. And they're still pretty uh, uh, scattered uh, out in this area. But yeah, there's some very nice homes, Mike, uh, that uh, well, I, yet I haven't seen any uh, tremendous damage. I've been keeping the camera, obviously, on 
the uh, tornado, so I haven't been able to see if anybody uh, has lost their home or lost a barn or some outbuildings or anything like that just yet. But uh, that storm continues to move right there to the east, and it has been ever since we've watched it. Actually, now, look, Danny, it looks like he's coming back to the west. Well, it's just It's wandered. now just turned. It's just come back to the west. Oh, boy, it's coming right for that home. It sure is, yeah. And Jason, again, you are uh, looking west of I-25? We up? are, well, we're right over. We are just crossed east of I-25, Mike, and we are looking to the east from okay. the uh, Castle Pines Parkway exit, right over the Castle Pines Parkway exit okay. at I-25, south of Lincoln Avenue, just south of Centennial Airport in that area that's just south of that new uh, reservoir out okay. here. So these storms are just to the east of I-25. Let me click the radar on real quick, if I can, just to give folks an idea of where we're talking. And uh, this is the area then where Jason is located. And we're going to zoom this in just a little closer and show you the activity. This is the spot that we're most concerned about then is just south of Parker, just to the east of Castle Pines, Happy Canyon. And it is right in this area that we're seeing the tornado. Uh, so we're going to switch it back again. This is the view from downtown. Nothing to worry about in the metro. And then we'll go back once again to Jason. And uh, obviously these storms, although they are not the classic tornado, Jason can be very destructive. If they were to hit one of these homes, we would uh, see quite a picture, that's for sure. Now, if you're in the area, folks, uh, these are not particularly large storms, but I mean, it's coming right in toward this house. The, the tornado is just sort of wandering back and forth across the area because it is forming along what we call a little uh, boundary that has come together. A couple of the outflows from two different thunderstorms being drawn up into uh, this particular cloud. And then because the storm is not moving much, this thing doesn't really have much in the way of steering current. So it's like a top spinning on a table and will just kind of drift back and forth around the area. The good news is formed over a fairly uh, lightly populated area. The bad news, of course, is that it seems to be relatively persistent and may be here for the next uh, five to ten minutes. And uh, we've been fortunate that it has not hit any of these homes yet. But uh, this is really dramatic stuff to be watching and following this storm. It's raised quite a dust cloud for sure in that area. Jason, some more comments from you. And you know, Mike, when you've talked about tornadoes in the past, it's uh, obviously the winds are an issue, but then when the winds, they pick up the debris and they pick up, uh, let's say it goes through a house and it starts picking up all that debris like we saw in Windsor, and then it feeds off each other and all that debris then can cause more damage, not just wind damage, taking roofs off homes and that sort of thing, but also then the flying debris can also cause a tremendous amount of damage. And we could see how much dust has been picked up by this tornado right now. And so the good news is you were talking about it's not very uh, densely populated out here so it doesn't have the chance to pick up a lot of debris could pick up some of the uh, branches and that sort of thing but I haven't seen a whole lot of trees uh, or brush in this area be picked up by the tornado and it looks like I'm gonna look down here sometimes we have some cattle and some other uh, livestock out here and no these are gonna be some uh, a builder some uh, looks like some farm equipment down there so that looks okay but right there that house is now being at least uh, pummeled by some of the debris that this tornado has been picking up once again let me pull the camera out here in Air Tracker 7 so you can still see the uh, tornado coming right out of that cloud and just spinning all that debris. It's been fairly stationary, Mike. It hasn't moved a whole lot. It had a pretty good track to the east uh, for a while now, and uh, now it looks like it's starting to creep just a touch to the north because that house right there was right in its path, came back west, and now it looks like it's drifting a touch to the north and sending all that debris. Let me get a good tight, tight, tight uh, shot of this tornado. Let me see if you can see a good picture of that, the swirling air up there as it's going down to the ground and picking up all that debris. See the hollowness in, in the center of it. Jason, if you would, pull back slowly and give our, our viewers just a little bit of an idea of where you're located. If you can maybe include Interstate 25 first and then pan back to where the tornado sure. is. Well, we're just now, we just drifted in air tracker just east of I-25. So I-25 is going to be out our right side of the aircraft here by maybe, let's say, a quarter of a mile. The uh, tornado is maybe about a half a mile, three quarters of a mile away from us out to the east. So due to the east of Castle Pines Parkway and I-25 is exactly where we are, Mike. And I'll show you if you've ever heard of that, that new reservoir that's being constructed out here, the one for Parker. Danny, if you could, uh, crab, if there's any way to crab a little bit to the left there. Uh, this is that new reservoir on the very left side of the screen right there, the Hess Reservoir, the one that they're going to have for all that water for Parker. And so that's where that location is. So it's just on the south side of that Hess Reservoir. And you can see it almost looks, Mike, like it's breaking up a little bit, like it's starting to dissipate. And you can see right here, look at that. It almost looks like it's starting to dissipate, even though I can still see some of the swirling action in there. It doesn't have quite the tight formation that it had just a few moments ago. 
Step back in for just a bit. Folks at home, what we're seeing here again is a, a tornado that is down over central Douglas County, just to the east of I-25, and it is right along uh, just east of the Castle Pines Parkway, but we're really watching it dissipate right now. And what happens with this type of a storm, which we call just a, a, a land spout tornado, it is almost like an upside down on the way it forms. The winds come in, swirling from different directions, feeding into a developing thunderstorm. The updraft takes that in and spins it up. It draws that into a narrow funnel. They're oftentimes wider on the bottom than they are at the top. There's no wall cloud. There's no big rotation of a, a classic supercell thunderstorm like the Windsor storm was. And in this case, because this thunderstorm has gone through its life cycle of building, being mature, and then dying away, uh, we've lost the energy for much of this particular storm. You can see it just fading away here. It's like a top spinning on a table and will just kind of drift back and forth around the area. The good news is formed over a fairly uh, lightly populated area. The bad news, of course, is that it seems to be relatively persistent and may be here for the next uh, five to ten minutes. And uh, we've been fortunate that it has not hit any of these homes yet. But uh, this is really dramatic stuff to be watching and following this storm. It's raised quite a dust cloud for sure in that area. Jason, some more comments from you. And you know, Mike, when you've talked about tornadoes in the past, it's